So we're here in, in Brussels at the European Crowdsourcing Week, uh, a summer. You just uh, uh, shared your uh, presentation mm -hmm. uh, about uh, sharing economy in, in, uh, and crowdsourcing in developing countries. You're also the, the CEO and founder of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Jugno. Mm -hmm. um, can, you, can you share some more information on what, uh, what so you're doing? So Jugno is an auto rickshaw hailing platform in India. Auto rickshaws are like small versions of three-wheeler taxis, which are the most popular uh, public means of transport in in India, so so we are we are an app that you can hail an auto rickshaw on, and uh, we are uh, we are about a year old and we are growing very fast, and it seems uh, people really like the service. Yeah, because you at the end of your talk you also shared some numbers. Uh, you mm -hmm. got uh, eight eight hundred thousand users and uh, uh, every day one uh, sorry ten thousand uh, uh, transactions. Yeah, so that's. That huge, uh, yeah, especially I mean, yeah. when you compare it to 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 European startups of yeah. one year old, is it just just amazing? So, mm -hmm. what's the difference between these markets? Of course, in Europe we've got small countries and everybody has to start over again. So it's uh, there are few different few uh, reasons for that. One is that uh, uh, the obviously the market size. There are 30 million transactions uh, in the Indian in the whole Indian country every day. So it's a much bigger market, number one. Number two is, uh, it's just not that convenient. The public transport is just not that good in India. So once people get an option of uh, conveniently and reliably hailing, an, hailing a ride, they just uh, use it and here, I mean, it's reliable. You'll get a taxi everywhere, but in India it's difficult. So, so that's also another reason. And also things like safety, because I guess uh, the drivers uh, also have to do some checks before yes, they get on the platform. Safety and uh, courtesy, the behavior, the whole driver behavior is very f different. When so we typically do a lot of trainings for drivers. So we do a lot of uh, checks for drivers, background checks. Also, uh, so we have something called community checks. So essentially, background checks uh, don't really work that well in India, like police verification and stuff. So what we do is, people will go and talk to some more drivers who will know that driver. So it's like, it's like a social background check and that works really effectively. So if everybody, if, if say we'll talk to five people who know the person, if uh, somebody says anything bad about the person, you know, it will be really difficult for that person to come on the platform. So that really works very well in a context of Indian, Indian scenario. Okay, and, 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 and how did you come up, uh, up with the idea and how did you make the first step in growing your business? <coughs> so, uh, so honestly, we just, uh, you know, we were looking for something uh, to, to be done. So we wanted to aggregate something that is very underutilized and big in size. So 5 and, million and, uh, Who is we? Sorry? Who is we? Uh, me and my co-founder, okay. uh, my CTO. So my CTO from my previous company. So this is my third company. And uh, the CTO in my previous company, Chinmay, so we have been, you know, working together probably for eight years. We were in college, we were building robots together. Then he went to do his master's, I went for physics, and then kind of, you know, we came back together again. And uh, we wanted to do something, uh, aggregate something and improve efficiency where the size of the market was huge. So 30 million rides a day is a huge market. And secondly, there's a lot of inefficiency. So uh, on an average, an auto rickshaw is only utilized for about 30% of the time. So that's a huge number, huge inefficiency. 70% is a very, very high inefficiency in a system. So, so we just chose this. And then, uh, how did you start? So we really, you know, just started, uh, we launched a very, very crude beta. So there was not like, you couldn't actually pay in the app and you couldn't even know how much the fare was. So we, I just went to a college, there was a f college festival going on. So I stood, in, stood outside of that and everybody who would take an auto rickshaw, I would just stop them and tell them, if you download this app, I'll give you a free ride. That's how we started. It's a very, very crude app, but we just, you know, because the, the transaction started coming very fast, people started coming very fast. So we were, we just scaled it really well. Okay. Um, but we started with a very, very crude platform, very crude product. Yeah. Uh, but then still, uh, you're now, yeah, your, your company is now 11 months old. Mm -hmm. You have already uh, 800,000 users. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so how did you could accelerate on getting new users? Uh, did you use media or what do you do? So, so actually, so you know, for every marketplace, uh, the best way of marketing is actually to convince sellers to be the marketeers for that company, for that marketplace. 
So we were able to successfully do that. So we were able to convince drivers that they belong to the community and because of that they started to propagate our platform. So every driver you know interacts with probably 20 passengers every day and if you get a driver to propagate the idea of, of this marketplace to the consumers, to the end consumers, so essentially that's the best marketing. So we have never done any mass media marketing. So you know it's, it's, a, it's a community and happily and luckily the sellers in that community are actually promoting the community because of that we are able to grow very fast yes. and very actually inexpensively yeah yeah mm -hmm. cool so so the drivers they are really your ambassadors to, exactly. to share their story and and and, and what are the what are the benefits for the drivers that they, that they are uh, earning more money because they're working more efficient uh, are you also providing them with other benefits so essentially the biggest benefit is obviously the increase in income because of increased efficiency and uh, and a second byproduct is uh, is uh, what we are realizing now is the social impact so the smartphone typically we give them the smartphones is the first digital link that they have so we typically open up the first bank account for the drivers we give them the first insurance that they get in their lives we are actually the first guide for their kids to guide them on education so there's so many things they're doing for the first time because of this platform that there's so many uh, byproduct advantages or you know uses that we never really imagined are happening so yeah. so you know pretty much their lives get changed because of a simple smartphone yeah but that's all uh, 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 that's also quite a, a capital intensive uh, way so so uh, uh, at what way did you manage to finance uh, your uh so it is a very capital intensive uh, uh, process, I agree, but uh, because the impact is so high, we are talking about $26 billion every year wasted just because there is bad efficiency in the system. So there are people who are willing to invest and uh, we in fact, uh, we did our CD, uh, angel investment of $1 million in, uh, in February and uh, then we raised a Series A round in May and we just closed a Series B round actually yesterday so okay congratulations Beth. thank you very much so I think uh, capital is not a problem if if the scope of the problem is huge enough yeah yeah I, I really believe that and, yeah. and and your business model is that you're taking a, uh, a cut uh, of the, uh, the the revenue yeah so we take a 10% cut from the revenue of the drivers yeah okay so that, that's, that's a fair price I think mm -hmm. and uh, in Europe there are quite some discussions uh, about mm -hmm. about the new uh, apps who are who are facilitating others to, to, to create value but in the end mm -hmm. what you're doing you're already uh, uh, using ex uh, existing Supply. uh, suppliers uh, mm -hmm. so uh, are there any trouble with tax or regulation or is it just really a smooth ride? Uh, not really so so the good thing is that we are actually not uh, uh, you know we are legal in the sense that the people who are already driving auto rickshaws we're just increasing their efficiency so in that sense we are we are very lucky to be be regulator uh, you know be regulatory kind of friendly or something I mean, there's no law that we violate in that sense that being said i do feel that you know there are some things that uh, you know some some laws are i mean laws don't really understand how smartphones impact every every aspect of human life so i think uh, the regulators and the government should be more liberal towards these uh, towards companies like uber i mean even though we compete with uber i really think that they're in the same industry and uh, people should back off and people should actually they're doing a great job right i mean they're they're disrupting this huge massive industry and i think uh, you know governments should actually uh, encourage these companies and uh, this industry so yeah and i also think uh, when you look at the difference between between uh, uh, like europe and, and India, mm -hmm. um, you also think the solution these new organizations bring are uh, uh, in Europe more a luxury thing mm -hmm. and, 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 and in India more a really basic life uh, things. Uh, so the impact on lives is, is, is much bigger and positive mm -hmm. uh, in, in the basic of life than in Europe. Do you think that's... That's true, that's true because so these things are actually bringing some of the things that are already available in Europe to Indian. Uh, community so so some of the things like uh, you know so like you know there are these airbnb alternates in india which are providing really cheap hotel accommodation to to people 
so so these things are already there i mean if you look at uh, hotel prices compared to the the prices of uh, you know what people make they're just sort of not that bad but if you go to india you know almost all the luxury uh, products are very very expensive luxury services are very very expensive because of lack of infrastructure so that is actually being bridged by these services by these on demand apps by these crowdsourcing companies so i think in that sense we are bringing something uh to the table which was not which is already there in europe and of course it is more convenient because of these companies in europe but in india it's like it's the first time so if you look at uh, uber they are building the taxi network there's no taxi network so for example jugnu i mean if you are sitting in a home there's no way you can actually hail and get an auto rickshaw to come to your home in europe you can call a taxi you know calling a taxi is more in it's little less convenient than hailing on a smartphone mm-hmm. so you are increasing the convenience but in india it's there's no alternative this yeah. is the this is the only way this is the first way so in a way we are leapfrogging the the inefficient way of doing things to the more in more efficient way directly so and talking about the, the background checks um because it's 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 also a uh, because when you when you have a really a decentralized mm-hmm. uh, uh market yeah. and w- and when something bad happens then uh, then it didn't then, then the impact on the market isn't this big because it's just an instance with uh, in, in this case one driver mm-hmm. uh when everybody is driving t- uh, uh, through a platform like like Uber or Jungo then it's uh, really affecting uh, uh, the brand so you mm-hmm. really have to be really careful with who you are mm-hmm. you're going to 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 uh yeah uh, let yeah. join your platform so at what way do you really make sure that uh, the right people are joining the platform you already sure. sh- shared some information about that but can you t- tell something more about that so so there are a few things i mean there's police checking there's uh, this standard kind of you know uh, kyc procedures that pretty much everybody follows but in an indian context one thing that we have really kind of innovated on is is that uh, we have these uh, social background checks basically you know we'll go to a person and uh, and try to understand from their neighborhood like you know how I mean, do they drink a lot do they do they do drugs and things like that and then there's a training part so typically every driver will come in and do a training like a 2 to 3 day training and then there'll be a test so if they fail the test it will have to do the training again so there are drivers who will do training three times and then pass the test so it does two things one they realize the importance of the platform they realize the importance of you know being fit to work in a platform and that creates a level of service that is expected by our customers so yeah mm-hmm. yeah and and how many drivers are now driving for the platform uh, about to uh, 2500 okay cool we are, so we are adding uh, about 200 drivers every day on okay. the platform okay and 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 how do you for, for yourself uh because uh how do you uh how do you say it because uh, uh when talking about uber because it's it's also really uh, easy to, uh, and interesting to, to to talk about them uh, i was in san francisco in december and when you look at uh, uh, your bill you also see a one dollar uh, uh, extra, extra charge, uh, mm-hmm. charge uh, for the education of the drivers so mm-hmm. i asked guys okay so uh, when was your last uh, last course they say uh, they are not doing this for a year because they are too busy with growing so at yeah. what way are you going to pre- are you going to pre- prevent for yourself to uh, to say okay we're not going this fast because we want to maintain the quality mm-hmm. uh, how do you going to do it for yourself because See, it's it's, honestly, it's really big, big temptation i think i think it's it's very tempting to grow very fast i mean we are growing fast but at the same time there are things that you can't compromise on so that is supply so we can't on board like 500 drivers or 1000 drivers a day i mean i've seen i have i know in instances where uber onboarded like 8000 drivers in a day so all they did was they brought a few cars with trunk full of smartphones and said everybody gets a smartphone everybody is in onboarded that's not something we want to do and uh, i don't know what their reasons are but but honestly i feel that uh, if you try to grow that fast i mean even uh, day before yesterday uber's uh, bangalore office was vandalized so all the glasses were broken everything was happened everything was like completely ransacked the reason is when you try to do things inorganically and very very fast you just don't condition people well enough people don't understand the platform so it's a greed play, greed driven platform so in fact uh, and we don't want to be that we want to be a platform that is uh, efficiency driven you know people do make more money but it's not like they're not super super greedy yeah 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, because uh, first uh, uh, the uh, inefficiency rate was 70%. Yeah. Uh, what's your target? So we are hoping that we can actually inverse. So it's 30, 70 right now. So 30% efficiency, 70% even inefficiency. We want to be at a point where we are doing about 70% efficiency. So right now, in fact, we are touching that. So so the so so the good thing is that, and and kind of a contrarian thing is that we don't want to have 10,000 drivers and increase their efficiency slowly. We want to have a small set of drivers which are very very efficient and then increase the number of drivers slowly, keeping the efficiency high. So this is one one very different approach that we're taking compared to Uber and Ola in India, is that they'll say we'll build a big supply and then make them efficient. We don't do that. So the reason for that is what we've realized is once people are actually efficient, right? once people realize the power of the platform, they engage very well and they start to believe in the platform. They become evangelists, which, which is actually our only sales strategy. We don't we don't do any any mass media marketing. All our marketing is done by the drivers, and for that, it's very very important that these these people really believe in the power of the platform. So that's that's what we are trying to do. Yeah, cool. I I, I really support it uh, mm-hmm. approach because it's really more a way of a sustainable growth exactly. instead of a short term uh, profit uh, profit growth. Yeah, profits are very far away, so <laughs> we're not really concerned <laughs> with that. <laughs> and, and, and what's your growth strategy? Uh, because uh, do you start in a city and uh, uh, do, you do, do you do it from city to city? Or yeah, so, so typically we have a very lean team in every city. So there's a core team of three people in every city and uh, they'll go to a city and they'll basically seed both driver side and, and consumer side. So essentially that generally means just s- uh, handing out some literature to drivers and basically going to these crowded places and getting people interested and in knowing about the app and getting them to download the app one to one. It's very counterintuitive because it's not scalable. So we are not able to get like, we typically get about 100 users, 200 users this way. And then these users actually pick up. So so our focus in both sides and driver side and consumer side is build these small number of super high engagement evangelists, mm. which will do the rest. And these people actually help grow our marketplaces. And once you can master that art, it's very easy to grow fast also you can grow fast because these people become your evangelist policemen right these people are actually uh, making sure that bad people don't come into the network so yeah yeah so it's so it's 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 it's, it's, it's really it's by self, uh, creating a snowball that will yeah self patrolling yeah 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 and um you're now uh, uh, uh are you focused on 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 on, trans- or on, on transportation of, of people, or, or or are you also in the delivery uh, business? Both. So so essentially, the the reason uh, I mean, the the, the auto rickshaw focus basically enables us. So auto rickshaws are almost as cheap and uh, to drive as a bike. So they're fairly simple and small small vehicles, and uh, the, the, because of that, they're very nimble in traffic also. So because of this, uh, we are actually doing deliveries also. They make economical sense for doing deliveries. And uh, for us, it's a, it's a logical uh, thing to do because what if the efficiency actually doubles? We are actually doubling the efficiency. What if every driver comes on our platform? Then we need to create this extra work. Of course, the number of rides will increase because of increasing demand, lowering price, but we need to have more work for drivers. And today in India, one of the big problems is last mile logistics. How do you do the last mile delivery for e-commerce and all these hundreds of things? So we are actually, you know, doing that and uh, making sure that, you know, people don't have to, these companies like Flipkart, Amazon, don't have to build the last mile logistics network from scratch because these are already people sitting who are sitting free and this is actually going to be the densest network, densest logistics network in the world. Yeah. So yeah. With five million people. I mean, you know, if we are able to get five million auto rickshaw auto rickshaws on our platform, I mean, I don't think uh, there's a logic for any company in India to build a li- last mile logistics network. Yeah. We can just use our service as a just press a button or an, as an API uh, consumption. Yeah. So just uh, be the best option there is in the market. Exactly. Best okay. and the cheapest. And what are your main challenges uh, for the coming year? Uh, sorry. Uh, what uh, what are the main ch- challenges for the coming year uh, in building up your business? Uh, challenges. I mean, you know, well, this is the first time I'm actually building a company at this pace. So, 
so i have to do a lot of learning that's one and essentially everybody in the team is learning a lot almost everybody is doing it for the like I mean, nobody really knows how to build a company that fast because nobody i mean i don't think there are a lot of companies in the world that have grown this fast so uber to give you an example took took over two and a half years to reach the kind of scale that we are at in less than uh, one year so so that is one challenge so how to build uh, networks how to build uh, organization structures how to train people how to motivate people these are all huge massive internal challenges that i'm trying to solve and the whole team is trying to solve by learning by having the right mentors and by talking to people as much as possible and trying to understand how did these people how did everybody else solve these problems so that we can learn from their mistakes and try to try to not make them yeah okay so and 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 what and what is your um, uh, your uh, ambition for the future i think as i mentioned uh, we want to have uh, we want to be the first company to to build such a massive logistics network i mean you know so our target is in 3 years we want to have 1 million auto rickshaw drivers on our platform and uh, be doing 10 million transactions a day which is i mean you know a massive Huge. number yeah great great okay thanks so i wish you good luck with that thank you very and, much and uh, thanks for the interview Th- thanks a lot for giving the opportunity thank you